Cuyahoga Local Access Cable GTV presents Chardon Hilltopper Football. Good evening, everybody. We come to you tonight from Chardon Memorial Field. Craig Dees along with John Walsh. Year number 17 for us this season there, buddy. And uh, for the Chardon Hilltoppers, boy, this season couldn't get here fast enough after having to live what they had to in the offseason. Oh, yeah, coming off a 2-8 and eight record, and uh, this is going to be an interesting game we have tonight. Last year, West G, well, to be quite honest with you, pretty much owned Chardon. This year, though, I saw him in a scrimmage, and Chardon is a much improved team, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So I think West G, their problems are going to be not looking ahead to next week when they play Riverside, and there's a little vendetta with their old coaching staff leaving them and stuff. So if they take Chardon a little lightly from last year's result, as well as looking ahead to next week, they're going to be in trouble against the Chardon squad. West Yaga Wolverines haven't been to this uh, part of the woods since 1995. Things are a little bit different now uh, than they saw back in 1995. But when you look at this Chardon Hilltopper team, when you go through a season like last year, John, where you get beat up and you, you only win two ball games, you hope that guys grow. And then the following year, uh, they, they rise to the occasion. I think when you talk about Dan Beliveau, the quarterback, you know, here's a guy who's a year older, he's a senior this year, and is a guy they're going to be relying on. Yeah, and he throws well. And they also have another backup quarterback who is more or less Ruckle. Uh, He'll get some playing time. He's more their running quarterback. So they got the two-headed dragon coming at you from that quarterback position. So it's going to be interesting offensively for these toppers tonight. And another guy that's going to leadership role on the offensive side of things is a kid that we're going to be calling his name a lot tonight, and that's Nate Coy. Yeah, he's uh, just speed. He's pure speed. And, uh, you know, if he breaks out in the open, there's probably none of the Wolverines that can keep up with him. Now, when you talk about the defense, you, saw, you said that you saw – uh, the defense with marked improvement. What were some of the biggest things that you noticed that they're doing this year that they may not have been doing last year? Well, one thing, the defensive line is a lot stronger, and they're not getting pushed out of the way. They're filling the gaps, allowing the linebackers to scrape out and make, and make the tackles, which is what the defense is geared about. Pass defense, it's still Chardon type of pass defense, so there's they got to tighten that up a little bit. But overall, the aggression, the, the filling of the lanes and all, and taking away, they're going to be fundamentally a much sounder defense this season. All right, well, there's a little preview of what we're going to see tonight. Tonight's game is brought to you by cable subscribers like you. That's right. Tonight's contest is completely funded by cable subscriber franchise free from Chardon Township, Chardon Village, Hamden Township, and Munson Township. This week's game is part of the GTV programming service made possible by your support. Our other funding communities not participating in this particular program are Burton Village and Middlefield Village. It's West G at Chardon. Enough said about that. Just down the street, a little bit of a rivalry there. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have youth football night. We'll have the opening act activities and we'll have tonight's kickoff after this brief timeout on GTV. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the 2010 Chardon Youth Football Night. Tonight we will recognize members of the Chardon Lions football program and the Chardon Football Club. We thank the players and their coaches for their time and dedication to the Chardon Youth Football Programs. At this time, let's meet the future Hilltoppers. First, the Chardon Lions Football Program. The 10 and 11 year old team, the Cougars. Head coach, Vic Peroni. And here come the Cougar cheerleaders, led by coach Sabrina Burkholder. The 10 and 11 year old Jaguars, head coach Scott Neas. The 10 and 11 year old Sabres, head coach Todd Beninati. And the Sabres cheerleaders, Coach Olivia Adams. The eight and nine year old Lions, head coach Dave DeMarco. And the Lion cheerleaders, 
head coach Beth Turk. The eight and nine year old Wildcats, head coach Jim Cohn. Followed by the Wildcat cheerleaders, coach Christine Clark. The seven and under Bobcats, head coach Rob Viacula. And the seven U Panthers, head coach Chris Zucker. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the 2010 Chardon Football Club teams. First, the A Division Buckeyes, head coach John Butella. And the Buckeye cheerleaders, coach Denise Budd. The A Division Oilers, led by Coach Sean Swick. And the Oiler Cheerleaders, Coach Tammy McBean. And the B Division Buckeyes, led by former Hilltopper, Brian Ash. The Buckeye Cheerleaders, head coach, Kathy Baker. The B Division Bulldogs, head coach, Tim Semler. And the Bulldog Cheerleaders, led by coach, Patty Trentinelli. And finally, let's welcome the C Division Buckeyes, head coach Chris Renzi. And the C Division Buckeye cheerleaders, coach Michelle Fisher. Okay, Topper fans, how about a nice round of applause for the future Hilltoppers? And Hilltopper Marching Band. On your left, Senior Field Commander, Nora Robinson. On your right, Assistant Field Commander, Sarah Cunningham. The Hilltopper Marching Band would like to thank all of the parents who helped them have a successful band camp. From lunch and uniform moms to those who hosted events, we appreciate you all. Hi, Anna. Okay, Topper fans, put your hands together for the Chardon High School fight song.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of our country's national anthem and remain standing for the Chardon High School alma mater. CHS on the field as they play the Hay Song. Chardon Memorial Field and here come the Hilltoppers for the 2010 season the opening night here against the West Geauga Wolverines and we are looking forward to a terrific night of football Ladies here it's a gentlemen, gorgeous here night Boy, Jen, whenever you hear about Chardon let's play our first game in mid to late Jim August you're thinking it could be 95 degrees with a lot of humidity but you couldn't really ask for a, a nicer night than tonight here for the opening the opening ball game. No, I'm sure down in the field they wish it was a little bit cooler because that uh, artificial turf kicks off the heat. But considering some of the alternatives, it's a great night for football. And it will cool off as the sun will start to set behind the ballpark. So it should just be ideal conditions here tonight. Obviously with the artificial turf here at Chardon High School, that is not a factor here this evening. Looking at the flag poles and everything, the wind doesn't look to be too bad tonight as well. So Chardon Hilltoppers getting all set for 2010 and ready to kick this thing off. It was a tough go yeah. for them last year in this first week. Got beat 
by over 30. So this year they are hoping for bigger and better things. And you talk to the folks at Shard and some of the coaches and some of the other people in the area, and they're excited about this team this year. And, and maybe that's just because it's the first week of the season. But down deep, I really feel that they feel that they've progressed and they're ready to go. Yeah, well, it's a combination of that and uh, more or less trying to get the bad taste the last season out of your mouth. And, but from what I've seen, it's a much improved squad over last year. And uh, how much improved? Well, they'll show us a leash and start tonight as they go up against an experienced playoff battle, the uh, Wolverine squad. Wolverines with a new football coach this season is Dave Boers. Of course, uh, some shard and ties there. Took a job at Riverside, so he has moved all the way up to Division One. Very nice for Dave. And, and uh, we got a new coach over here at uh, West Geauga, so we'll see how that goes for him as he takes over the program. He was on the staff last year. Yeah, and it's uh, how he fares. Yeah, I guess uh, they kind of a little bad feelings on him leaving and stuff and they'll taking the, what, three of the coaches along. So they had a lot of replacement duties to go over there and it was a little later than normal. So uh, West G, I know, has got the next week's game against Riverside <laughs> Circle on their thing, which Actually, if they're looking ahead too much, like I said, that plays in the Chardon's favor here because Chardon's not a team to be trifled with like last season, you know, where they could, uh, West G could have put their team in the field and won handily over them. This year is a much improved squad, and if you overlook them, you know, you're going to have problems. And I think even if you don't overlook them, they're going to be... You know, quite a battle here. So I'm looking forward to a good ball game either way tonight. So Lou Serino is the head football coach here at West Geauga, so we'll see how he goes. Nick Cuthbert is going back deep. One of the West Geauga Wolverines. Yeah, setting up uh, about the seven yard line. Getting set to kick off for the Chardon Hilltoppers is the junior kicker, Tyler Hogan. Yep, another in the long line of uh, good Chardon kickers. They've come up with some good ones over the years, you know. So we're ready to go. Chardon actually won the toss. They deferred, so West G is going to take the football to get things rolling, and we'll see how the Chardon defense comes out of the gate as well. Yeah, playing against that triple off option, you know, which I'm sure that they got a, the first look of anybody last season, and uh, they'll get the first look this year as well. There we go. Take it away from Cuthbert to the 15. There's the 20, 25 with some room to the 30, down to the 33-yard line. Making the tackle there for the Chardon Hilltoppers. Looks like John Connick was in there and Eric Myroff as well. Yeah. So it's a first down and 10 for the West Geauga Wolverines. And they've got an experienced quarterback, Joe Drensky, six foot tall, 210 pounds, leading this offense. And a lot of folks think that uh, as he goes, so go the West Geauga Wolverines this year. Well, he was the one that led him into the playoffs last year as he was their starting quarterback. So, uh, He's well seasoned and uh, you know experienced and probably one of the people they look to for leadership in this West Jugga squad. And they pitch it back and up to the 37 yard line. A gain of about three on that one. As Joe Zaccardi. Well, it's nice to see that right out of the get go, the fresh roster is no longer any good. Zaccardi wearing number 40, supposed to wear number one according to the roster that was sent to me. Yeah, well, I guess we make adjustments wherever we As can. As we go. Second down, <laughs> seven yards to go. We got these rosters, what, on Tuesday or something? Drensky going to run the option. He pitches it back to Zaccardi, who gets across the 40 and lunges up to the 45-yard line. That'll be yeah, two yards goes. past the marker, and that's a first down. Yeah, they had the outside sealed, but he just made a nice cut to the inside and was able to pick up the additional yardage he needed for the first down. Yeah, it looks like West G is geared on uh, hitting the outsides on Chardon tonight. So far, at least initially, with for opening two plays. Drensky under center. It's a first down and 10. Pitches it back. That's Zaccardi again. And he's got some big room across midfield and into Chardon territory down to the 47-yard line. Yeah, Chardon's going to have to tighten up on those ends a little bit. Uh, you know, seal them with the uh, deep defensive end out there and then have the corners and the outside backers come up and give them some help on sealing it but 
When you start doing that, that's when Dreza kind of does a little fake and uh, tosses it over if you come up too quick from the cornerback position. Gain of eight to second down and two. Krensky barking out the signals. Yeah, it looks like he's doing a little bit of an audible there. And he'll drop back to throw. He'll fire, looking down the middle of the field. He's got a man. Down to the 10, to the 5, touchdown. Wow, he was wide open. He absolutely was like three steps, and he waited on the ball. Had a luxury of waiting and still was able to outrun the Chardon defensive backs into the end zone. So West Yaga comes right out of the gate and gets themselves a touchdown here early on with 10-11 to go. Yeah, and essentially all it was was running strong to the outside. Uh, not a full student body sweep, but they had extra bodies out there with the uh, backside guard pulling out to help lead the blocking on the outside. And that, it was kind of power rushing to the outside and then the big pass they hit. And the kick is up and the kick is good. Yeah, a little bobble on the snap, but he got it down well, the play setter. It's Matt Bricklebank who Put that one through, and it's a 7 and nothing ball game. So Drensky with a touchdown pass to, once again, a guy that's not on the roster. Wow. That's incredible. 7 and nothing is your score. 10-11 to go. So we've been talking a lot about this Chardon offense, and a lot of folks think that will be the strength of this team. So it's one of those things where they're going to have to come back and answer now, John, and see if they can't uh, match West Jug. I mean, we maybe have one of those games where everybody's just up and down the field. Yeah, and I'll tell you, defensively, they got to learn to come up a little bit and seal those corners because uh, I'll tell you, quite honestly, I, it was a cakewalk out there. I mean, it was easily a six, seven-yard game every time they touch the ball and go to the outside. So somehow you got to contain out there, turn them back to the inside where the backers can get to them. And, uh, So, yeah, they they got to make an on-the-field adjustment defensively and seal those corners a whole bunch better. But it's the offense's turn to do their stuff. Well, there's a kickoff, and it is going to come up just a little bit short. And that's Coy at the 18. He's going to cut back toward the middle to the 25. Got some room. He's got room across the 30 to the 35, and he's down at the 36-yard line. Brought down by Greg Kohler. Nice open field tackle there. You got a chance to see Nate Coy handle the football already here early on. Yeah, well, he's the, the speed guy in the team, so you know he's going to be back on all kicks because that's the type of person you want to get the ball. So we'll see what the toppers do offensively here. So Dan Bellavo will come out, and he will quarterback the offense. And he hands it straight up the middle. Not much there at all. Maybe a yard gain, that's about it. So a gain of a yard on that play. Barry was on the carry. Got a couple of those roster numbers correct. Yep. Thanks to yep. Dave Jevnikar there. Uh, he's listening. Coy goes in motion. You run the option. Bellavu got keep the it. little outside leg, got the first down. Yep, and more. Near midfield up to the 49 yard line. Nice job there by Dan Bellavu. Yeah, he took it. Bellavu, uh, excuse me. Took it uh, kind of between the guard and the tackle position where the hole and, uh, was scheduled to be, and then cut it to the outside and was able to pick up an additional four or five yards. So good running, good blocking execution by the right side of the Chardon's line. So it's a first down and 10. They toss it back. That's Connick. Connick gets across midfield into West Geauga territory. He'll pick up a yard on that play. Bring up a second down and nine. Yeah, again, they didn't, uh, didn't have much of an outside run going on there as West G sealed it up really nicely. Which is what uh, you know, Chardon's got to do when they on their defensive end when they get back out there, seal Eight. up those corners. Eight thirty-nine and counting. Delavo goes from the 
Shotgun. That's Coy in motion. Hands him the football. He gets upended and down he goes. Might have got a yard on that play. Yeah, that's about it. By going aerial, he was able to get the yard. Kind of went over the top of the guy and stretched it out uh, body length to get a yard. Looks like Adam Laricki was on the tackle. That'll be third down and nine coming up. Nick Ruckel runs the play into the Chardon huddle. Interesting to see the strategy of Chardon here if they open up the passing game here, which normally this would be a, a passing down. We'll see if they cater to that theory or if they just run it as usual. Connick in motion. They hand him the ball. He drops it, picks it back up, and he's yeah, going to get there's smothered. There's nowhere to go. Yeah, he lost. lost. two. Could have been worse on the play. Nice pursuit there. Josh Suba, among others, there on the tackle. Also Ryan Melkerson, and that'll bring up a fourth down. Yeah, luckily the ball bounced up in the right way and went back into his hands. Or That could have been disastrous where West G could have taken over and shard inside of the field. <coughs> Rob Turlin goes back and he will stand at the 10-yard line. Okay, Chardon has to tighten up here. This game could get out of control early here. And over end kick, a little wobbly. It'll bounce and take a good shard and bounce. Inside the 15 yard line. Nice down punt about there. The 12, yeah. Yeah, luck. I don't know why they let that ball hit. The guy was there to catch it. I don't know why he didn't catch it. Could have called for the fair catch and just caught the ball. But he elected not to, and Chardon was able to pick up an additional probably eight yards on the roll. So first down and 10, the West Jaga. Offense will come back out. Yeah, defense has got to do some holding big time here. Yeah, if they can hold them and keep them down deep in this end, that will help their offense as they'll get the ball in a good field position. Brensky going to keep it, got some room, and he gets collared back at the 20-yard line. Yeah. Able but, to get around the corner. Yeah, but unfortunately, that was like a tackle from behind. Like you said, collared. Somebody reached from behind and was able to grab him there. He had the corner again and was probably... Got a lot more yardage out of that if he hadn't got grabbed from behind. So we've got it up to the 19. Yeah, I'd be surprised if West G just doesn't keep, I mean, why run up the gut or even go to the passing game or something? Just keep milking the outside. They hand the ball off. Big hole right there for Vince Sicardi. Yeah, that was off tackle that time. And uh, like you said, there was a huge hole opened up on that left side of that defensive front for West G. Misspoke before. I thought it was Joe was four. Joe's, Joe Zaccardi's actually wearing four, and Vince is wearing 40. They'll split Kusa to the near side as Drensky goes back under center. First down and 10. They've got the ball spotted at the Chardon 33. 6.05 to go here in the first quarter. West G leads it by a score of 7 to nothing. Straight up the gut that time. That's big Ben Sicardi again. Kind of stumble forward for a good four yards or thereabouts. Ben Sicardi, a senior, he's 5'10", 230. And Actually, Joe Sicardi, 5'11", 228. He's a junior. He wears number four. Yeah, they marked that one a good solid five, almost six yards on that carry. Second down, we'll call it four to go. The other Sicardi in motion. Drensky going to run the option. He's going to tuck it under. He's across the 45, and he's upended, and down he goes at the 48-yard line. Tackle on the play by Riley Hawkins for Chardon. And that'll be another first down as they push the ball all the way up to the Chardon 49-yard line. Yeah, that time it was a – there were people on the outside for Chardon. They just had bodies on them. they got to keep those bodies off of them, use their hands a little bit more. Push them off and get rid of them as the ball carrier is coming and make that tackle to seal up those outside lanes that are opening up big time for West G. Drensky hands the ball off. On the carry, that's Joe Pinto. Yeah, I hate to say it, but thus far this evening, offensively, West G has just been able to do whatever they want. As every play in their playbook seems to be working tonight. Gain a nine on the play. Second down and one.
And the ball off. That's Pinto again. He's got the first down, and he is finally brought down on the play by the Chardon Hilltoppers. Zach Barry on the tackle. Yeah, it's Barry's limping a little bit here. But he's going to stay in the game. I don't see him coming out at all. Eric Pavlik just trekked in. Travis Ritt comes out now. We are going to see Barry come off the field. Looks like Quinn Izar went in. Okay, one of the coaches saw him lumping around and sent in a substitute. First down and 10, 4-12 to go first quarter. <laughs> Drensky hands the football off right up the middle again. They go as Joe Pinto. <coughs> so he'll pick up another solid gain of three on that first down. They're just having their way with them up front right now as the clock ticks under four minutes to go. Yeah, that's like I said, it's every play in their playbooks, whether they go inside, the outside stuff. Thus far, they haven't had to go to the air, and the one time they did, they did very, very successfully. Joe Zaccardi goes in motion. He takes the pitch. He'll cut it back to the 30, and he'll get near the 25, actually inside the 25 to the 24, and that'll be good enough for another first down. So another first down for the West Geauga Wolverines as they continue to march the football. Yeah. Barry shook off whatever's ailing him, and he's coming back into the ball game. That time, they actually had the outside sealed off. He turned it to the inside, a little lane opened up, but there was no linebackers. The linebackers are getting jammed up in the middle there. There was no linebacker to scrape over and make the tackle. But the D end and the corner did turn in that play well. Pinto broke a tackle, got near the 20-yard line. I'll spot it. Actually, knee must have gone down on that ankle tackle to push it back to the 23, so give him gain of only about a yard on the play. Under three minutes to go here, first quarter. West G with the football leading, Chardon 7 nothing. They run Mitch Kusa to the near side. Lone setback is Pinto in the backfield behind Joe Drensky, the quarterback. Long count that time. And he's going to tuck it under. He's going to keep it. Cuts back inside the 15. And he keeps his legs going inside the 10, inside the 5, and wow. out of bounds near the 2-yard line. Yeah, couldn't see if that was just hard running or if he was getting pushed from behind or what because it was on the far side of the field. There's a lot of bodies in between there, but uh, that pile just kept moving down the field and bringing it down. Well, it's actually inside the 2, almost to the 1-yard line, isn't it? Yep. It's like the... So that'll bring up a first down and goal. We'll see if Pinto, who's been the workhorse on this drive, gets the football. I would think so. I would think it'd just be straight inside handoffs. And he, he's had good blocking up front and been able to rack off the three, four yards that he carries. And he does take the handoff, and it looks like he's going to be just a little bit shy. No signal yet by the linesman who came in from the far side. No, he's not signaling. I saw the quarterback who went back yeah. and signaled, but he doesn't count. His credibility is a little biased, I think. So it looks like he picked up only about a half a yard. It looks like it's right on the one-yard line. So second down and goal from the one as we approach the two-minute mark here in the first quarter. I wouldn't be surprised to see the same play or just maybe the same play to the opposite side of the line. Drensky going to keep it himself, bounces to the outside, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, as West G again puts points on the board, makes it 13 to nothing now with the exit point forthcoming. Um, well, this isn't the defense I saw in the scrimmage. That defense was, you know, controlling the inside at least. A little bit weak on the outside. I would see that Mayfield had good luck sweeping on him, but uh, I thought that would have been corrected by now. But. You know, so far, West G, I don't know if West G's very good or Chardon's not quite as good as I give him credit for. Well, we'll see how the rest of the night works out. Matt Brinklebank knocks another extra point through, and so far, if you're a West G fan, so far, so good. No problems offensively. Now, it's a question with the Chardon Hilltoppers. Number one, can they keep the ball for a little bit, get some sort of momentum going, maybe figure yeah. some things out? And, you know, still early in the ball game. We've seen a lot of strange things over the years doing these games in our 17th year now, John. So it's early. doesn't look good early, but you never know. You get a score right here, and you're right back in this thing. So Yeah, actually, they only gave him a field goal up in the scoreboard. Yeah. That is uh, 
That is what they call home field advantage right yeah, there. Yeah, I think so. So in the scoreboard, it's only 10-0. So they've knocked four points off them. I'm surprised that uh, West G fans don't stand up en masse and start screaming scoreboard. But they'll get corrected eventually here. The Hilltoppers will get the football back, see what they can do with it here. Yeah, Chardon does need to do something. And like you said, uh, keeping the ball for a while, keeping their defense off the field would be good, but points would be much, much better because yep. they got to get this momentum turned around here. Because right now, uh, West G is just looking to stick it to them real, real early here and end this game. Bricklebank to kick off. You'll send it deep, and that ball will go, go into the end zone for a touchback. So the Toppers will take over first down and 10 on their 20-yard line with 1.48 to go here in the opening quarter. Terrific crowd on hand here tonight on both sides. It, I was looking at the West Yaga side just before kickoff, and it looked like it was a little sparse, but it filled yeah, up they, pretty they quickly. Fell, uh, they got a lot of fence eggers, too. Well, this is a good you know, down-the-street rivalry, too. I mean, we talked about the first time West Yaga has been here since 95. You hope that they can keep something like this going. A couple of good, for the most part, pretty solid programs year in and year out. Yeah, now we just got to get the scoreboard a little odd. Ah, it's 14, speaking of scoreboard, it's 14-0 yeah. now. Line, he finally caught up on it. Linesman came in. He's going to say something to the referee. And whatever it is, they're going to bring it to the other hash mark. Or actually right in the Center middle. Center of the field, yeah. So bring it in. So 148 to go and see if the Hilltoppers can get something rolling here. Is That doesn't change Chardon's play call, though. Dan so Bellavo. Short side, wide side, doesn't really matter. That's Coy going in motion. We got flags, we got movement, and that'll be a five yard penalty against the Chardon Hilltoppers for a false start. That was a weird motion. Did you see that? I yeah. mean, it was kind of like he thought he was supposed to go tight, and then realized he had to go wide. So he went to the inside, then vittered out to the outside. And I don't think that's a practice motion. I think that was just an error. And, uh, uh, the play running, you know, where the motion man just uh, forgot which way he was supposed to really go in motion. That's Coy again going in motion as they roll Bellavo out. He is hit and he is going to be dropped back at the five yard line. West Jaga coming in mass there to put Bellavo on his back. Yeah, where they actually going to mark him? Since his be yeah, the beanbag went down closer to the four. Yep. So that'll bring up a second down. Wow. Chardon attempts their first pass of the season and uh, just didn't have any upfront blocking on that one. Second down and 25. So that tells me West G's just coming regardless, you know? They don't really care if it's a run or if it's a pass. They're just coming in a hard. Bellavo going to keep it, gets across the right side, gets some running room, gets near the 10-yard line. Nice pick up there of almost six yards. A little bit of breathing room now and a third down play coming up as we've got 50 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Gorgeous night here in Chardon, short of the score on the scoreboard at this point. Yeah, but like you said, that does give a little breathing room, but we still come up with a third and 20. So I'm not sure if you want to go back to the pass game again, the way that the initial one blew up in their face, and that was on an early down where they wouldn't be looking as much here. They'd be looking more for a pass. So I think they'll go back into, yeah, they did. And there's Coy got across the 15 to near the 18-yard line. Another good gain there, but well shy of the first down. They needed to get 20 on that play. And now that'll bring up a fourth down in a punting situation. So Kirsch will come on to punt. Yeah, the offense didn't do what, uh, you know, we said that they really should do, at least keep that ball for a while. They didn't even do that at the, with the, between the penalty and the sack. Well, that's the first quarter has come and gone. Not a good one for the Shard, but they will be punting the ball back to the West Yaga Wolverines. 14-0 is your score. We played one quarter. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this. Well, it's a fourth down and 11 as we begin second quarter action here from Chardon. West Geauga is going to get the football in some terrific field position. And there's an end-over-end -end punt. 
that's going to be fielded. By Turlin at the 45, almost fell down, almost lost it and got bowled under at the 45-yard line. So the football will be at the 40. Where are they officially going to mark it? Right on the 45, right on the, yeah, 45, right on the 45 of the Hilltoppers. And Joe Drensky, who has run this office, offense very well so far. And he's used a couple of different running backs to do it, John. He's had. Yeah, they, they, they've mixed it up quite a bit. You know, going outside, inside, inside, outside. You know, just, you know, throwing a pass here or there. They've, they've had a pretty varied offense so far. But, uh, again, when every play works, it's, you know, just pick a number and run that play. Well, they toss it back to Vince Sicardi, but there are some flags and maybe the first mistake of the yeah. evening for West Geauga. That could be good because make a short field not quite as short here because uh, West G starting out on the short side. Yeah, there was a little procedure call. So they're at least moving back to midfield. Because West G will have to start out with a first and 15. So first down and 15. They split Turlin to the far side, and they bring another wide out to the near side. That is Joe Zaccardi going in motion. Vince is the lone setback. They run the option. Drensky's going to keep it. Nice move there inside the 45-yard line. He'll pick up six on that first down and make it a second down and nine. Yeah, the least is back to handling range now as they got back their five-plus a yard. Yeah, I think that was an option because he had the ball there where he could have, it's either a, a pass or run option, you know, as he's sprinting to the outside. So it depends on, uh, you know, the corners can't really release and help seal the outside on that particular option play. Put it back, and that's Vince Sicardi. He's got some room on the far side, and he's going to be near a first down. Looks like he may have it. Oh, yeah, he got it plus a few yards on that as he uh, gained 13, I think. So they're spotting the ball down on the 33-yard line. And Chardon has seen enough. They want to take a timeout and see what is yeah. going on here tonight. Hey, high school sports is part of the programming lineup here on GTV. Our coverage continues all year long for Berkshire Cardinal, Notre Dame Cathedral Latin, and Chardon. We're just starting our fall coverage and look forward to all kinds of sports in the months ahead. You can check channels 20 and 22 and the GTV website, which is geogatv.org, www.geogatv.org. You can check that regularly for replay dates and times. So plenty more. We're just getting started. Have you done anything else, any other sports so far, John? Is this your uh, first this broadcast year? this year? No, it's my first one this year. Well, no, no, I, I shouldn't say that. Early in January, February, I did some wow. wrestling matches. I should Does say that this, count? I should say this new school year, so. No. So it's now first down and 10 for the Wolverines. They've got the ball on the Chardon 33-yard line. We've got some other Chardon games coming up later this season. we got East Lake North. We're going to do that game. and I'm going to be out at Notre Dame Cathedral Latin and Lake Catholic as well at some point. They all run together for me. Yeah. First down Kinda and look 10. look week to week and see where you got to go on Friday. The color-coded calendar on the fridge. They pitch it back. And that's Vince Sicardi. And he slipped a tackle but still got brought down after a nice hit there by Alex Muir. Yeah, Mo Mueller got some penetration that time. Was sitting there when they tried to take the outside route. He was standing there and stopping it and did a nice form tackle there, too. Kind of stuck that shoulder in the thigh pads and uh, held him up a little bit, even though he slipped it and dove forward. It was a good, solid, fundamental tackle. Second down and 11, a loss of one on that play. And they fake the pitch out as Drensky goes to throw. He fires. He's looking. That ball is wow. caught somehow downfield by Vince Sicardi, who caught a touchdown pass earlier. Double coverage. I thought that was going to be intercepted. Yeah, Connick was back there, and I couldn't see who the guy in back, but like you said, it was. But he threaded it right in the middle there. Receiver went up and elevated to catch that pass. That was a just a well-executed play. Good catch, good pass. Josh Suba on the reception. Well done there. First down and 10 now. They spot the football 
inside the shard and 15 at the 13 yard line. Yeah, I think that's one of those when it rains, it pours, and West G just whatever they do works out for him tonight. Drensky changing things at the line of scrimmage. And he hands the ball off, and that's Vince Sicardi, and he is staying on his feet inside the five to the four. Yeah, he squirts down there and uh, again gets good yardage. So that'll bring up a second down and one, so they can still get a first down and get to the three-yard line. And Drensky going to keep it, goes behind Zaccardi, and he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah. So Drensky keeps it. We're going to credit him with a five-yard run. He's got a 47-yard touchdown pass. He's got two touchdown runs and with 9.43 to go here in the first half. It is 20 to nothing with the PAT to follow. Matt Brinklebank. Yeah, Chardon has got to get something going here and uh, turn this around because it's just offensively and defensively, it's been dominated by the West Jago Wolverines. And it's 21 to nothing here. Still 9.43 to go in the first half. Don't forget birthdays, anniversaries, and other special occasions can be made more special through GTV. Send that terrific picture of pictures to us, and we'll help highlight the event. Please enclose a self-addressed stamped envelope. Once again, our address is GTV, Post Office Box 336, that's Chardon 44024. Or you can email us that beautiful picture at TV at windstream.net. Again, TV at windstream.net. So love to have those different photos. And from what I understand, they're not always the most flattering photos. Sometimes it's a kind of a backhanded happy birthday wish. And they oh, get yeah, some yeah. To put terrible photos of ones on yes. there. Yeah, that Chardon sideline looks down, doesn't it? Look, they need some coach to go and uh, smack kids on the helmet and get a little, uh, you know, spirit going on there. That's just a very, very flat sideline right now. Understandable, it's 21 nothing on the scoreboard, but uh, you know, you got to get. It's an emotional game. High school football is, and uh, you need to put the emotion on the sideline as well. Bricklebank to kick off one more time. Standing back deep is Nick Ruckel. He stands at the. Five yard line, end over ender, headed right his way, and he'll grab it at the five. And they hand the ball off to Coy, and he gets upended at the 11 yard line. That was a good job of defense there by Greg Kohler. He stayed right where he needed to be. They always talk about staying in your lanes and not being deceived, and he yeah. stood there, and Coy got the football, and the trickery for Chardon did not work that time. Well, that's one of the things I'm sure the coaching stuff started mentioning when. When a team gets down, they want to make something positive happen. That's when you reach into your bag of tricks. And on the kickoff, that's one of the times you can pull one of those out. So I wouldn't be surprised if on the sideline, the West G coaches warned them of that fact of, uh, st like you said, stay at home there and just do your jobs because they might do reverses or little pitchbacks or who knows what. First down and 10. And they hand the ball off. That's... Zach Barry. Is that Barry? It was just a big pile of uh, bodies moving along there as Barry gets two yards. Yeah, that's number 30 getting up there. Well, and as explosive as a guy like Nate Coy can be, we know Barry's going to get a lot of carries this season, and he very well could lead the, the team in rushing. But Nate Coy is the big play guy, so you wonder, you know, he'd get the ball into his hands as well. So it's a second down. Looks like they gave him actually three on that play. And they're going to roll out Beliveau, and he throws, and that oh, pass is picked set. off. Wow. That is Nick Cuthbert, who cut in front of the receiver. He'll pick it off at the 25-yard line, and that'll give West Yaga the football back with 8.54 to go here in the first half, already with a 21 to nothing lead. I was looking to see if there's any flags on the play, but there was not, and that'll turn the ball back over. Yeah, I guess that's... a. That's almost a pass from Chardon here early in the game is almost like a trick play. So, uh, unfortunately, that one didn't work out well for the toppers, and uh, West G is going to, you know, plenty of time here in the second period, and they got the ball deep in the Chardon territory inside the Chardon 25. At the 24-yard line, first down and 10.
Drensky to throw. Steps up, being chased. Slips a tackle. And finally will go down in the arms of Zach Barry. Was able to pick up a couple of yards there. There is a flag back at the 25-yard line. You have to see what they call that one. It's kind of an odd spot for him. It's almost all like the dance around he was going to do. Huh? Legal shift. So legal shift is the call against the West Yaga Wolverines. And they did pick up some positive yards there, but I would imagine they're going to take the penalty, and they will to move them back to the 29-yard line. So it'll be a first down and 10, yeah. or first down and 15, excuse me. Yeah, get those stakes moving whenever you possibly can. Because those have been few and far between for Chardon. They split Turlin to the far side. They've got Kusa to the near side. The setback is Vince Sicardi. Looks like he might be autolyzing here again. Calling out to his wideouts. And the ball off, and Vince Sicardi gets stuck at the line of scrimmage, meeting him there. Middle of the Chardon line. Or I guess not necessarily audibleizing, but decoying the Chardon because he, he yelled out to both his wideouts and then there was a straight inside handoff. But Chris Lessler on the tackle for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, they, they need to at least hold them to a field goal try here. They can't afford to get allow another touchdown here in this first half. Second down and 15, no gain on that play. Drensky to throw, swings it, has a man on the near side. That's Joe Zicardi. Wow. Cuts back nicely at 20. 15 flags flies. He is pulled down at the eight yard line, and one of the Hilltoppers went down. I don't know if it was a illegal block below the waist, but one of the Hilltoppers, yeah, that's and Anthony Bacchiel. Yeah, and he's definitely limp, limping grabbing his too. knee. So he may have been blocked below the waist. Or just straightforward clip in the back of the legs. Illegal block in the back against West Yaga, so that'll move the ball back to the 26-yard line. So they still get some positive yards on that play, a couple of yards, and that'll bring up a second down now, and it looks to be about 12 or 13. Yeah, and that's, that's one of those uh, back yell came off of the field on that one, so it's, hopefully he's okay. I think he just got to, his legs tangled up and bent a little bit. Drensky pitches it back, and he's got his trailer, Pinto. Pinto down the far sideline inside the 10, and he will pick up a first down. Boy, Drensky kept that ball for a long time yeah, he really before he did. pitched it back. He ran that, that, that's the classic triple option right there. That's one of those plays that uh, you think he got sealed off, and then all of a sudden the guy on the outside is rambling 10 yards downfield as West G... Picks up a first down to get the first and goal going for him now. 7.39. Clock has stopped as the football went out of bounds. But they've got the ball at the seven-yard line. Yeah, we see Bacchiel there. He's, he's moving okay now. So a uh, little Charlie horse or whatever he picked up in his legs is gone. He'll be ready to go back in. Drensky to Pinto. Oh, wow. Big hole right side touchdown. Wow. Huge hole. Yeah, that thing was just blown wide open. That, that was just incredible. That was between... Uh, Alex Kale, the right guard, and Kevin Nebes, the right to tackle. They just blew open just a supersized hole there. And now it is 27-0, maybe soon to be 28 as Matt Bricklebank comes in to attempt the point after. He's getting a workout tonight as he bangs that one through with 7.34 to go. Here in the first half, it's a rough night so far for the Hilltoppers. They are down by a score of 28 to nothing. GTV has an email service that will send you GTV replay information. Just go to the website, www.geogatv.org. You can sign up, and when, we're, when the schedule gets set, you'll be the first to know. It's easy and informative, so sign up now. That is, if you want to find out when the GTV replays are, geogatv.org. I, I signed up for that. As a matter of fact, got one today that uh, telling when this replay was going to be. It's going to be run Saturday and Sunday. Well, good. I don't recall the times, but it's an email if you get the service. Yeah, it is kind of And if nice. John can figure it out, then you know it's 
got to be pretty darn easy. Well, it took me three, four times to <laughs> register, but I got through. And now, now it's in Dave's lap. He's, he's the one that's got to get it out to me. I know how to open my emails. 7.34 to go. Bricklebank to kick off. Yeah, we're all, hopefully we'll lose that sun for the second half as it's about right above the tree lines right now. Ruckel will grab it again at the five. Straight up the gut he goes. No fanciness there as he comes across the 20 to the 23-yard line. So it was just straight right up the middle. So the toppers will get it back, see what they can do with it this time. Yeah, Chardon kind of got burnt the last time to try to get a little too fancy on their kickoffs. So they just get whatever they can out of it. Hopefully they can keep this ball for a while, keep it out of the hands of the West G offense. Because they haven't had a whole bunch of luck stopping them tonight. Yeah, they need to group together some first downs here, eat up some clock. And the ball to Coy, cuts back, he's got some room, 30. 35, and knee went down about the 37 yard line. Nice run there by Nate. And he was brought down from behind by Nick Cuthbert. We've called his name a couple times already, but a, a good run there. And again, getting the ball in the hands of a big play guy, and he gets you some big yards there for the first down. Yeah, Cuthbert came from behind and grabbed a handful of jersey and was able to bring him down by his jersey. But the stakes move for Chardon, and that's definitely a positive sign. Up to the 39-yard line. Again, it's Coy getting a handoff, trying to bounce it outside. And actually did a pretty good job of picking up a couple yards. It looked like he was going nowhere. He was initially shoved away by Josh Suba, and then he got held up enough for the rest of the guys to come and help him out. So he does pick up really something out of nothing there, John. He picked up almost five yards on that play. Yeah, there wasn't a whole bunch there. Uh, then he was able to break that initial tackle where the guy got into the backfield, but after that, a little lane opened up that he was able to penetrate in to grab his five yards. And timeout is going to be called by the Hilltoppers as something on that defense that they did not like. Yeah, that's their second one this half. Don't forget, if you're a nonprofit organization from our funding community, you can send us your announcement of interest at GTV. That's Post Office Box 336 in Chardon. Or you can fax that request at 285-9897. Or you can always drop the email at geogatv at windstream.net. So there's three different ways you can get that nonprofit organization. Get your announcement up there. It could be a golf outing, anything you're raising money for. Love to help you out. Just drop us a note, and we'd be happy to get it on GTV. Or just see Dave walking around town and grab him. You know, he, he'll take your information. Okay, Chardon's got to keep moving here. They finally are getting a little bit of offense going here. They got to keep generating it because, like I said, uh, you definitely don't want to give any, and there's still seven minutes. There's yep. a lot of time left in this half. But you don't want West G having that ball because they can score pretty quick here. So it's a second down and five coming up. So we'll see what they play they thought of here at uh, during the timeout. Connick goes in motion, but they hand the ball to Barry, and Barry only able to get a yard or so on the play up to the 45-yard line. So that'll bring up a third down and a long four. Yeah, and they, they need this one again. <laughs> You know, because it's getting out of the point now that if you don't do anything offensively, West G in theory could get this ball back two more times mm -hmm. this half. So it's a third down and four. Coy and Barry in the backfield, and they hand the ball to Coy, and he gets stuck at the line of scrimmage, does fall forward for a yard. Yeah, not a whole bunch there, though. Looked like Andy Bryan was there. And Chardon has to kick. He can't get you know, fancy here and go for it or anything like that. And plus, go for it still is three yards, and three yards isn't the guarantee against his West Jogot defense tonight. Well, Chardon's going to call a timeout and talk about this. With 28 to nothing is the score, with being the score with 6.08 to go. I don't really know what you got to discuss. You discuss punting the ball. 
which, you know, why waste the time out to do that? I don't understand this time out at all. Not that uh, timeouts are that critical to Chardonnay here in this first half, but uh, it also stops the clock, and that, that's your friend that you want to wind down here. Looks like they're going to go for it here. The punt team is nowhere to be found right now. They're in there trying to figure out how they can pick up three yards here. Or is this uh, just a case of uh, trying to draw them offside and then uh, take the penalty and kick the ball? Because this point in the field, the five yard doesn't mean anything. But again, you know, it's kind of one of those you don't have to do a timeout to do that. You tell your kicker as he's going in. Uh, no, they're going to run it straight from scrimmage. But they did. Snow. Wow. Hands the ball. No, nope, keeps it. And he's got the first down across midfield. Boy, he stuck that right in the belly. And Nate Coy pulled it back out. Was able to get around the right side. They needed three or so. And they end up getting five. And that's a first down. Wow. <laughs> so well done there. And that'll bring up. That'll move the chains, and clock will be wound up as we are under six minutes to go here in the first half. Chardon on the move right now as they've got Zach Berry as the lone setback. Connick and Coy are the wings. And Bellabo drops back. Lefty fires near side through it behind his intended receiver. Yeah, somehow I'm not sure if he overran the route, was supposed to cut it up a little earlier or what, but... It seemed like he was thrown to a spot, and the receiver was like two yards downfield from that spot. Archie Kimbrew the third was the intended receiver on that one. So that'll bring up a second down and ten now. Oh, he does have a third there, doesn't he? I'm not making stuff up, you know. No, well, I don't know. You, you you like playing with numbers, creative math. And they hand the ball off, and that's Barry with some tough running, and he is going to be about a yard shy of the first down as he barrels his way to the 39-yard line. Barry, 5'11", 200-pound junior. Some pretty tough running there, and he'll leave the toppers either side of a yard shy of a first down. Yeah, and this is definitely two-down territory here. You know, I'm, I'm sure they're just going to do straightforward type of stuff, maybe even a sneak. Try to get the first down. If not, they'll go for it on fourth down. Bellavo under center. Yeah, if you're going to. Connick in motion, hands the ball to Barry, breaking tackles, and he gets down to the 30 yard line and maybe even the 29 yard line. And that will be another first down for the Hilltoppers. Just, boy, strapping on those chin straps and just rearing back and just. Straight to smash right, mouth football. Yep, right down the middle of the line. And I tell you, they need to get something going here because. Uh, now I see a little bit more life on the sideline, you know, and that, that's something you got to have. You got to have those kids fired up a little bit to play. Kimbrough to the far side. You've got Ruckle to the near side. That's Connick going in motion. They fake the pitch. They give it to Coy. He's dancing around, and he's able to pick up a couple of yards as he got inside the, to the, about the 27-yard line. A flag came flying in. Might have a late hit. Actually, on West G. Nope. Yeah, I think it's a personal foul yeah, on he did West no. G. There was a guy that came flying in just a little bit at the end of that pile. Yeah, that must be what it is because he's doing the cross, uh, yep. cross hatch with the arms. And I think that's what it was. They put his head down or even a spearing. I mean, guy came in leading with the helmet. Well, that's going to be a first down then. So they pick up three yards on the play and tack on another 15 after that. Well, not quite 15. It's half the distance. They're inside the 30. Yep. Good, a good solid 12 13, though. No, well, we give them right down to the 12 yard line. Oh, really? Yep. Wow. So it's a first down and 10 now for the toppers. They've got the ball to 13. Very lone setback. That's Coy. And they run it. They pitch it back. And Coy bobbles it, but he handles it inside the 10 and dragged down at the 9-yard line. Picked up about 3 or so or maybe even 4 on that play. Yeah, that ball was just a, a hair away from bouncing out of bounds there off of Coy's hands. Better than in the arms of a Wolverine. Well, yeah, definitely so. It would have been a loss, but it wouldn't have been a loss of the ball. 
Clock ticking down as we're nearing the four-minute mark. Coy actually going to hobble off the field right now. So Connick is in there. And also Riley Hawkins. Yeah, they got about four on that one. Barry straight oh, up the geez. gut again. Oh, they hand the ball. That's Hawkins, excuse me, got down to the five-yard line. Yeah, he had problems holding on to that ball initially, too. But was able to, again, get the good bounce. We was able to pick it up and uh, move it forward a little bit. Puts him a couple yards shy of a first down. Now third down. Looks to be about two for the first down, obviously, and five for a touchdown. So you got a couple of downs to get a couple of yards here. Oh, yeah, you definitely. I, I don't think at this point with 28 nothing on the scoreboard, you go for three. So and I not, think it's definitely a go for it time. Hawkins came out of the off the field limping, and Coy went back in. Wow. Kim Brew to the of, near side with single coverage. Seems they have a lot of ankle problems tonight. Bellavo hands the ball off. No, I don't think so, but he should be awful close. Yep, going to be very close. The linesman on the near side, both linesmen actually calling to stop the clock. Maybe measurement close. Referee eyeballing it and says, yep, man, why don't you bring the chains in? Let's take a look at this. So he stopped the clock with 2.55 to go here in the first half. Of course, we've got the halftime show coming up. We've got the bands going on at halftime. So Chardon showing some signs of life here. Is the be really nice to get in the end yeah. zone here oh, and get a little bit of momentum well. going and take something like that in the after. But you, again, 2:55 in the clock, you don't want to get in first down, Chardon. So they just did get it, you and don't. now Forch cracks at it from the three. Yeah, you don't want to get in the end zone too quick. Be nice if you score in the third down play here. Eat some of that clock up. I'm down 28 nothing. I want to score on any play. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, matter. yeah, yeah. So Barry, see if he's been the workhorse on this drive. We'll see if he takes the football. Nope, it's going to be kept by the quarterback, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. Dan Bellavo in from three yards out, and the offense perking up a little bit here for the Hilltoppers as they get a three-yard run by the quarterback. Yeah, that's all our touchdowns have been by, by a quarterback today. Four of them by runs and uh, one of them by pass from the quarterback. And to attempt the point after is Tyler Hogan. Ruckel on the hold. Snap down, kick up, and that one is good. So with 2.50 to go here in the first half, Chardon is on the board. They trail it by a score of 28 to 7. Tonight's cable cast is funded by your cable subscriber franchise fees. We'd like to again extend thanks to all the GTV funding communities, including those not funding tonight's contest for the year-round support. They are Burton Village, Chardon Township, the City of Chardon, Hamden Township, Middlefield Village, Munson Township. Thanks again for supporting GTV and thanks to all of our viewers for their support. The response continues to be very, very strong. We do appreciate that and we hope that you enjoy all the programming that the GTV provides in your living room or den or wherever you might be watching these different uh, events from around the different communities. Not just football, of course, all kinds of sports and some of the local community events as well. Well, this would be a good time for a turnover for Chardon here. All right, able to take the hat off now as the sun is set down behind the, yeah, we, <laughs> the trees. We're just a hair from not seeing the sun. We should be fine second half. Boy, that is bright, staring you right in the face there. All right, so Tyler Hogan set to kick off. Going back deep, we've got Joe Zaccardi back there. And Nick Cuthbert. You try anything crazy here, John, or you just kick no, it all off? No, yeah, no, you just kick it. Just do your regular, regular play here and hope your defense has got a little pumped up from the offense finally score. Joe Zaccardi across the 10 to the 15, 20. It's about the 23-yard line before he is brought down. So there's 2.44 to go here in the first half. It's 28-7. to West Geauga with the lead and the football. Yeah, now the defense has got to start showing their stuff a little bit here. Like I said, turnover would be perfect. If you can get one down near deep and uh, ideally get another score out of it, then we're back in the ballgame. 
But uh, minimum, we want to just keep West G from hitting the end zone again. They run Cuthbert to the near side. As Joe Zaccardi is a wing on the near side. And Vince Zaccardi takes the handoff across the 25 to the 30. And he gets to the 33-yard line. That'll put him about a yard shy of a first down. Well, I tell you, they do get good blocking by West G on the outside there. It's a... Uh, that time I saw uh, Joe Zaccardi lead blocking out there, and he kind of sealed the guy that allowed his brother to cut to the inside a little bit and get a good gain out of that. Yeah. There's something, you know, yardage from backs and stuff, but the, the importance of a blocking back can never be understated. Drensky to throw, fires it in the flat, has a man in and out of his hands, though. Boy, put the ball at him. Larici could not come up with that as he drops the ball, and that was a first down all over it. Oh, yeah. Well, sometimes you try to turn your head just a wee bit to look down the field and see what's ahead of you, and that's just enough to have yeah, you misplay it. Offset the your eye hand coordination there. So a third down and one. Big play for the Chardon defense here. Drensky barking out the signals. Handoff, and that is Vince Sicardi, and that's a first down. He'll plow across the 35 to the 37-yard line. Yeah, that was easily moved the changes. We're down to 211 with West G having all three of their timeouts left. So there's plenty of time for the Wolverines to do whatever they want here. Chardon defense has got to dig in and not allow it to happen. Under two minutes to go now. People actually put and there's some movement. Yep, in the deep in the backfield, Vince Sicardi was moving before the snap, and that'll move the West Geauga Wolverines back five. They had a little confusion because Mitch Kusa came on late, as one of the other players had limped off the field, and yeah, they have tried to rush it there. Yeah, might not have known exactly what the play count was or something. So that'll bring up a first down and 15 now. Yeah, that helps the Chardon defense. Any penalty we'll gladly accept. Drensky keeps it, has some room, gets tripped up at the 39, and there's a flag, and you may have a, a hold there on Vince Sicardi. Or a legal block below the knees. As they threw it right where the tackler was where that brought down Drensky. As uh, Joe Zaccardi again was on that outside throw and another good block. So I think he's the one that got called for the block below the knees. So that'll move jo them back. Joe or Vince? Oh, I'm sorry, Vince. Vince. Yeah, yeah, Vince yeah. got called. Right. Remember, we got the two <laughs> here. Joe threw a good upper body block I saw outside that uh, allowed the guy to get to the corner, and then Vince went below the waist to get the flag thrown on him. So we've got a timeout on the field. And why don't we go down as well? We've got a 28 to seven score. We'll come back, we'll wrap up this first half momentarily. Well, it's a first down, 18 to go. The ball is on the 29 yard line of the Hilltoppers. West Yaga with the football, 140 to go here in the first half. Joe Drensky under center. You know, Wolverines are helping the Chardon defense a whole bunch with all these mistakes they're making here. Drensky fires down the field. That ball's picked that off. Good. Coming back the other way for the Hilltoppers is Stephen Douglas. And Douglas will bring it all the way back to the 40-yard line and plenty of time left for Chardon as they've got the ball at the 40 with a minute 28 to go. Yeah, except they don't have any timeouts. So uh, that could come back and haunt them. A couple of those were taken when I'm not really sure that they need to be taken. So Chardon's got to do a little smart plays here to conserve the time. Maybe a little outside that can run out of bounds if they need to. Well, what was a 28-point Wolverine lead, if Chardon can get into the end zone, they'll cut that in half before the half. Like I did say, uh, Hogan had a 33-yard field goal in the scrimmage, so if you can get down to close to the 20, you're definitely within range of him. 
Pass is complete okay, to Ruckel. Got, he gets five. They got to line up right away. Yeah, clock's running 119, 18, 70. You can't go back to a full huddle. You should have had two plays called. Yeah, we're down to 110, 19. Clock's just running, run down. They got to get these plays off a little quicker here. We're kind of hurry up offense a little bit. Bellavo brings him up under a minute to go now. 56 seconds. Coy in motion. Bellavo going to roll out. The lefty's going to be hit Ooh. from behind. He eludes Ooh, a tackle. Yep. And now he's going to go back the other way. Looking downfield. Guns it. Pass is incomplete. Pass was intended for Ruckel. Both defenders ran into each other and fell down. And that will bring up a third down and five. The clock stops with 43 seconds to go. Well, that's such a tough... To bring him to the near side like that, too, John, is tough being left-handed like that. Oh, Having sure. to throw across his body, but he was able to reverse his tracks. That would have been a well, big loss. Well, he did a nice job of just breaking away from the defenders there and not taking the big loss. So it's a third down and five. Bellavo will bring him up to the line of scrimmage. Ruckel will split to the far side. Looks like Kimbrew to the near side. And they're going to throw it up again. And that's uh -oh. picked off. Oh, he just stood there and... Uh, Stepped right in front of it. And that's a turnover coming back the other way. That's Josh Suba. Yeah, I don't think Bellevue ever saw him. He was like... A, <laughs> he turned invisible out there for him. So now West Geauga gets the football back. But luckily only 36 seconds left. But again, the two timeouts. I don't know what their field goal kicker's like, but uh, he may come into play at some point. So West G was started at the 46. See what their hurry up offense looks like. So Drensky under center. And he fumbles the snap and he will stagger back to the 45. He's going to regain his feet inside the Chardon 40 now. Down the sideline, stays on his feet. And finally is out of bounds at the 25-yard line. What an athletic move there. Yeah, even when Chardon does get a break with a fumbled snap and they had guys defending it and stuff, uh, it still turns out bad for him. The one point is they did eat up a lot of time there as we're down to 19 seconds left in the half here. They actually say he stepped out of bounds all the way back here at the 32-yard line. Boy, oh, boy, look hard to tell from here, but the official right on it, so that helps yeah. things out a little bit. Uh, he was definitely tiptoeing along the sideline, so I don't doubt that he did step out at some point. Swing pass to Joe Zaccardi, and he's inside the 30. Breaks it back to the 20, stays in bounds, and gets inside the 15. Only seven seconds to go yeah, now. And West G takes a timeout immediately. So the clock stopped to move the chains anyway, but they won't let any more time run off as they're down to seven seconds to go. They may feel that they've got an opportunity for one more go at it maybe into the end zone and then get that field goal unit ready. Well, I don't know. That's asking a lot for high school kids. I think I'd just grab the three points if I could. Personally, that's what I'd do. So we'll see what they do as they're huddled around their coach. Yeah, because it's you got to remember, I mean, uh, even though they do have the experienced quarterback as uh, Drensky was around last year and all that, uh, kids tend to, you know, not get rid of the ball, not outside. They try to make the big play happen, and when you do that, you're just eating the clock, and seven seconds can go real, real quick. They do have one timeout left, so. I don't know if that's going to come into play. Like you said, it's pretty much got to be a, a pass attempt at some time, or they ideally to, one in the end zone. Because right now it's in at the 15. It would be a 32-yard field goal, so maybe they'll try to center it up in the middle of the field a little bit and pick up a couple extra yards and then go for the field goal. We shall see as Joe Drensky brings the Wolverines to the line of scrimmage. Vince Sicardi in the backfield and Drensky going to roll out. Oh, they're going to run one. And he's going to fire it and he's looking toward the end zone and it's incomplete. Once, uh, and that is the end of the half. There's nothing on the clock. I, I, but they may put one second I, back I on there. I think they will, because I flipped over yep. right after it was incomplete. Look, there was one second, but it ran out. So. Yep. Hey, clock operator tried to help the cause there a little bit, but well, they're going to put one second back on the clock. The truth is, that's an arbitrary thing. Official time is kept on the right. field anyhow. So, uh, you know, if he hit his little stopwatch button, 
that's the one that really counts. And West Geauga will take their final timeout and decide whether they're going to try to knock three through the uprights or go for it here. So West Geauga is going to take the timeout. Why don't we break as well? we'll? Come back, we'll have the final second, and then we'll have the bands coming right up. Well, it's a second down and 15. But the bottom line is right now they're gonna, there's only one second left, so they're going to give this field goal attempt a try. Looks like about a 33-yard attempt. Matt Bricklebank puts it down, Plenty and the kick leg. is up, and the it kick is a wide. little bit left. Yep, wide left, had the distance, and that will do it. We have played one half of football here at Chardon Memorial Field. And the Chardon Hilltoppers... Getting a little bit of momentum back here at the in the second half at the second quarter, and we'll see if they can parlay that into something better in the third quarter. We'll take a break. When we come back. We'll have the marching bands coming your way next. You're watching Chardon Hilltopper football on GTV. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Introducing the 2010 Hilltopper Marching Band. The band is being led onto the field by field commanders Nora Robinson and Sarah Cunningham and Majorette Captain Caitlin Hummel. We open tonight's show with the Bill Chase tune, Get It On. Next, we feature our top rets with captains Rachel Lane, Kristen Nygaard, and Maggie Williams dancing to a cool tune by the Young, Young Blood Brass Band. Here is Brooklyn.
To close our show, we feature Eric Henry and Nick Stevens on trumpet and our percussion, percussion section and majorettes and topperettes. Popular back in the 1930s, here is Big Noise from Winnetka. And here's the Chardon High School fight song. All right, let's get ready to go. Second half. Matt Bricklebank to kick off. The Hilltoppers will get the football. They trail it 28 to 7. Let's see if they can get something going on. It was 28 to nothing at one point. A 47-yard pass from Joe Drensky to Vince Sicardi. Then Drensky with a one-yard run, a five-yard run, and then Joe Pinto with a seven-yard run made it 28 to nothing. And then Dan Beliveau from the, from the Chardon Hilltoppers, a three-yard run to give the Chardon Hilltoppers their touchdown, and that's where we sit right now as we are ready to go here in the second half. Brinkle Bank to kick off, and it's a short kick that's going to actually bounce into the hands of Ruckel. Ruckel across the 25, got some room at the 30. He's going to stutter step and get upended at the 41-yard line. 
He is brought down on the play by Blake Seaman. But a nice run back, and we've got another Chardon man down back at the 25-yard line. I'm pretty sure that that is, you know, that's Anthony Backiel. He was down earlier. And, again, I don't know if that's. Yeah, that was on that, that illegal block. He went down. Yep. They are grabbing his leg. Almost looks like cramps the way they're grabbing both of his legs like that. And that's that yeah. time of night. The well, hopefully that's what it is. Yep. The sun is set down behind the trees now, so the lights have taken pretty much the effect yeah. here. And a lot of sweatshirts and light jackets in the crowd, which is very pleasant for this time of year in August. Yeah, these well, are actually new banks of lights here. They replaced all the banks. So they should be back to what they were 10 years ago. Well, as they work on the injured man. Yep. Why don't we step aside? We'll come back when play resumes momentarily. Well, we've got our injured player off the field, walking under his own power. We're being told that it's cramps. Yeah, Trope has taken over at the center position for Bacchiel, who has to be out for at least one play here. Elevo fumbles the football on the exchange, and West oh. Geauga has it. That's not the way they drew it up at halftime in the locker room, I'm sure. Came right off the hip of Barry. And the ball recovered by West G. They'll have the ball in excellent field position at the Chardon just inside the 40-yard line. Yeah, that's, that's not the way you want to start the second half. A long, sustained drive into the end zone would have been the premier way. So West G gets the ball in Chardon territory here. Early in the second half. So Joe Drensky will big, bring the club out, and he will have Vince Sicardi as the lone setback. And Drensky's going to keep it. He's got some big running room as he's inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Yeah, Drensky's an impressive-looking quarterback. He, he throws well. He runs well. He, he handles the, the field generalship very, very well. Having that good, experienced quarterback in there is definitely a plus for a new coach in this West Chugga system. Makes his job a whole bunch easier. Kerensky hands the ball off this time. And it's gonna be very close to a first down. Yeah, they're personally, yeah, they're marking him at hair short. Uh, Vince Cardi. Had to get to the 30-yard line, according to the stake. Actually, where they spotted now, they moved it back about a half a yard, so it's short of first down. Third down and a half a yard. Kusa will come to the near side. Again, West G, I'm guessing, uh, would go for it in two downs if they don't happen to make it on this one. So deep in Chardon territory down at 30. Yeah, we've got some movement up front, and that may cost West G five yards. That makes it a little bit more challenging third down play. Yeah, they're going to have to earn it now. That is a Procedure. dead ball. Yep. So that helps Chardon's cause. So wind the clock up with... A third down and six. Look where the ball's placed. It, it was actually closer to the 30 than that. They moved it back to the 36. So it was a little more than a five-yard penalty in that one. Trensky to throw. Going to roll out. Pump fakes, cuts it back, shy of the first down. Got dragged down at the 32-yard line. He's actually putting him closer to the 33. Aaron Allen makes the tackle, and that'll bring up a fourth down and looks to be about three yards to go. Yeah, but I'm sure they're going to go for it here and be an in Chardon territory. Plus, that would be one heck of a long field goal. That'd be about a 50-yarder if they tried to kick it from here. Oop, they got yep. Chardon to give it to him. Yep, movement up front. Looked like Lou Lamaga jumped off and he gets caught in the neutral zone and that'll move the sticks five yards which is enough for a first down yeah they made move. it easy in play decision down to the 28 so sg again is uh 
getting the chains moving as they get the break that time on the penalty exchange. Krensky on the option. He will keep it 25, room to the 20, to the 15, and he's out of bounds at about the 12. Boy, nobody touched him until he got down to the 12-yard line. That's what I'm saying. That blocking on the outside is outstanding for West G. And again, I saw... Um, Uh, Joe Zaccardi out there blocking. He's he's a heck of a blocking back, I'll tell you. Number four. So that'll bring up a first down now in 10. The ball spotted at the Chardon 12-yard line. Joe Pinto has come into the backfield now behind Joe Drensky. I think we're going to see Joe Pinto immediately, too. Drensky nope. going to keep it. Sheds a tackle, gets inside the 10 before he's flung out of bounds. Now they faked the Pinto, and Drinsky just pulled out of his belly and kept it, took it to the outside, and got a uh, good four yards out of it. So West G continues to move the ball. Second down and about seven yards to go. Almost closer to, maybe even closer to six. Pinto is back in the backfield. Drensky going to follow him through the hole and didn't get anywhere. Might have got a half a yard before he ran into Zach Barry. Yeah, they just stacked up that defensive front that time and uh, took all the little running lanes away from him, which hasn't happened that often tonight. Look, they may have snuck it up a half a yard. Looks to be about third and five, five and a half. 8-10 to go here in the third quarter. Chardon trails at 28-7. Krensky going to roll. Fires it back wide open in the yeah. end zone. For a touchdown, Rob Turlin picks up that touchdown. The senior, Drensky with his second touchdown pass of the evening. And it's... 34-7. Yeah, I tell you, this is a, this is a good-looking West Jaga team out here. I tell them they're going to have a strong CVC season. There's no question about it. And uh, any fact that they were looking ahead to next week, I think is out the window right now because they're, they're playing really, really good ball and uh, led by a super strong quarterback out there. I'll tell you, um, Dr Drensky is one of the best I've seen. What they call the penalty? Yep, there's that? a flag on the play. Must be a personal foul of some kind, huh? Wow. So take those points off the board. So that'll move it all the way back now to the... I didn't even see the flag thrown at all. 24-yard line, make it a third down. They got to get down to the two and a half for a first down. Yeah, that's a big break for the Chardon defense. Krensky back to throw, zings it down the middle. Ball is caught at the one and into the end zone for a touchdown. And that is Joe Zaccardi with the touchdown grab. Boy, the defender leaped up and just a little <laughs> over his head. I and think that he is now a 24-yard touchdown pass. I think he misjudged that ball. You know, he... Kind of thought he could step in front, leap up, and intercept it, but uh, it was over his mm. head still, you know, and the defender was wide open to receive it. So that was an ill-timed gamble on the defender's part. Bricklebank's extra point is right through with 7.45 to go here in the third quarter. 35-7. to seven. The Chardon Hilltoppers trail it here, so West G takes advantage of a turnover and runs it right down the field and gets themselves... A touchdown. If you do Twitter, so does GTV. You can follow GTV on Twitter. For all the latest replay news and other important information, you can join T GTV on Twitter, and you'll have all the latest. So look those guys up on Twitter, and they'll keep you posted. You Twittering yet, John? No. No? no. You do Facebook, John? No, I don't do Facebook. I figure that's uh, my kids can do Facebook. I'll stay away from it. 
Plus, I'd, I'd end up with incriminating pictures on there, and it's it, just not worth the hassle. So you don't tweet? I don't tweet either. Okay. No. I'm just checking. Just was wondering if you, if you did tweet how many followers you had. No, I, I but you couldn't. got none. No, no, I got none. So it's Bricklebank not, will kick off. Yeah, it's not from lack of popularity or anything. It's just a, I'm not available, not a participant. You don't think people are interested in what you're having for lunch? Is that what you're saying? I don't believe so. No, okay. I'm not really interested in the, many of the things I do. So why would somebody else? So, so Ruckel stands back deep. That ball is going to be kicked and taken by... One of the up men at the 20, 25, 30, across to the 35-yard line on the return. That was Eric Meyerhoff who will bring it up to the 35. Good field position for the Hilltoppers, 7.38 to go. Here in the third quarter, they trail at 35 to 7. West Geauga basically picking up where they left off, even despite that huge penalty that called a touchdown yeah. back. They were able to come right back and get another score. But it was set up by that turnover by Chardon, and that, that's definitely something that the Chardon can't afford to have. Yeah, they got to get something going. This game's starting to get a little bit out of control here, and Chardon needs to at least save some degree of face and get some positive things happening going into their game next week. Ruckel pitched that back to Coy who picks up about four yards on that play. So now we've got the senior Nick Ruckel. Now they really like the way this guy runs the option and runs this offense here as opposed to not necessarily throwing the ball as well as Bellavo does. So a little bit of a different wrinkle here. They're going to throw at West Geauga here in the second half. And that's Coy going across the right side, has some room first down and then some as he gets knocked out of bounds in West Geauga territory at about the 45-yard line. Yeah, that's the thing. If you get the quarterback in there who's got more of a reputation as a runner, that opens it up where they got to key in on him a little bit more, and that opens it up for the outside for the other runners to take advantage of that. So, uh, you know, besides having a strong runner in there, it also uh, opens up other opportunities for you. Ruckel going to keep it. And he cuts back to the 40, and he puts his head down to the 36-yard line before he is bowled under. Look as though Adam Larikia got there, and that's another first down for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, supposedly the new look is, uh, at least at this point in time, is uh, paying uh, dividends. They run Kimbrew out to the far side. It is nice having two different types of quarterbacks that you can put in there. Steven Douglas to the near side. They hand the ball to Coy with some room on the outside. Cuts it back. Flag flies inside the 20. Inside the 10 on his feet. He dives to the 3, but I think we're coming back as there are bodies down in the Chardon defensive backfield or yeah. offensive backfield, but there's also a flag down there yeah, it's Chardon, as well. It's Chardon bodies that's down as we got number 52, who is not on my roster. Is he on yours? No, sir. So he is down. He went down in a heat back at the 38-yard oh, line. wait a minute. I saw earlier that might be Pavlik at number 47. I saw him put on a 52 slip over okay. jersey before. So I'm not a – it looks like cramps again, yeah. thankfully. That is Pavlik, and let's hope that's all it is as the trainer has his leg straight up in the air now. They move the football back. Coy with a good run, but it'll be negated. They'll bring it back to the 44-yard line. We've got a man down. We'll come back when play resumes right after this. So Eric Pavlik able to get off the field, hopefully just a cramp. With the penalty, it wipes out. A big gain. It'll be first down and looks to be about 19 yards to go for the Hilltoppers. Nick Ruckel looks into the sideline, and now we're going to have a timeout. Yeah, the Chardons just got to keep doing what they were doing. You know, I mean, it's it's working here with uh, uh, Ruckel in at quarterback. You know, it's a, just a different look. And, and I'm not saying he's a better quarterback because, uh, 
Yeah, there's there's no question that uh, Bellevue is a very fine quarterback, but Rucko gives you a totally different look, and it's just like throwing a changeup in baseball. Well, don't forget there's great programming every week on GTV, so stay tuned to Channel 20. Don't forget the community and school bulletin board services provided 24 hours a day on GTV 20 and 22. You can check out geogatv.org for details. First down and 19 for the Hilltoppers. Ruckel is under center. And a deep crouch. And he's going to run the option. He's going to keep it. He's to the 40 with a blocker to the 35 and down to the 34-yard line. Boy, he battled his way against Nick Cuthbert, yeah. who tried to rip that ball out of his hands, that, but he was able to hang on to it for a big gain there of about 11. That's what I was just going to say. It's West G has gone into strip. That gave him probably an additional four yards by them trying to strip the ball rather than making the tackle out there. But that works as sharp as advantage is now it's a manageable second and nine. 546 and counting here in the third quarter. As Ruckel hands the ball to Barry. Big hole left side inside to 30. And he'll get down to the 26 yard line. Looks like he might be about a yard or so shy of the first down. And again, it's four down territory for Chardon as they'll just continue moving the ball as they get to third and short now. If they happen to get stopped here, they'll go for it on fourth without a doubt. That's two pretty big offensive plays there on first and second down. And when it was first down and 19, now you're looking at a third down and a long one. Well, with the new quarterback and the new look and the offense or something, it's been all big plays, actually. I don't think they've had anything under six, seven yards. They give it to the Barry, and he bangs his way across the left side, drags some tacklers, and he will pick up the first down. That was a nice little sequence of plays for the Hilltoppers on a first and almost 20. Three plays later, they've got a first down on the board, and only 10 to go. A little more conventional this time on the... Uh, on the approach as they've got the ball to 20, well, it looks like the 23-yard line. And it's a case of mixing in, using different people, too. You know, handing the ball to your fullback, handing it to your halfback, quarterback keeping. It's just uh, putting a little variety into the offense. Oh, that's forward motion. Yeah. Canada, that would have been fine. I can't believe they're just, they, they let it go. I thought they'd blow that one dead as soon as Zach Berry went through the line of scrimmage before anybody else did. <laughs> So they're just going to call that an illegal shift, but it looked like old Zach was heading toward the line of scrimmage. So that'll move it back five yards. So a first down and 15 now. 4.37 to go, third quarter. I guess actually it was technically an illegal shift. You know, he was just in forward motion there. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, Zach heard uh, it was on two and everybody else heard on three. They split Kimbrew to the far side, Douglas to the near side. Nick Ruckel under center. And he keeps it, cuts it back, able to pick up some yards, stays on his feet and lunges wow. to the 20 yard line. He's got good vision there, finding a little open lanes. Actually, they're gonna spot his knee down closer to the 22. They'll pull it back a little bit, but still, uh, Again, he got the penalty back plus another yard or so, so that bring up a second and nine. Yeah, he's got really nice vision down there. He started out to the right, saw the lane open up on the left and took that one, which was the right decision. Douglas to the far side, Meyer off to the near side now. They give it to Coy, uh, and he gets stood up. Oh, boy. Didn't fool anybody on that one. No, guy standing right there waiting for him. A couple of different uh, Wolverines there, including Zach Cusera. So that'll give him a loss of about a yard. So third down, we're looking at third down, eh, a little bit more than 10 now. Yeah, but in theory, call it 10. You know, it's just a hair over. So, I don't know. This this is kind of borderline. Like I said, uh, the kicker seems to have a decent lane range and also has a good accuracy and all. So, uh, depending on what they get on this play would determine if they'll go for it on fourth down or make an attempt at a field goal. 
I have to say, if they get uh, five or better, they may just go for it. If they don't, they might take a shot at the field goal because even though three doesn't help you a whole bunch, it prepares you for later in the season. Ruckel going to keep it. Dances back, is upended. Not much doing there. Got a yard or so. Try to cut back, but it really got swallowed up there pretty quickly. Looked like but Nick Spies was one of several in there. Official's going to call a timeout as they've got one of the Wolverines kind of sort of limping off the field there, Ryan Melkerson. So they'll wind the clock up now. Under three minutes to go, third quarter, 2.55 to be exact. And Chardon down by 35-7, deep in West Yaga territory, says well, let's just go uh, for it. I here. see Bellevue came in. Yeah, Bellev where's Bellevue going? Yep, he is. He's under center. Yeah, so they're going to be obviously making it look like it's going to be a pass play here. He will go shotgun. Ruckel splits out to the near side now. They run a man in motion. And down he goes. All the way back to the 38-yard line. And coming in to make the play and coming in pretty strongly there was Nick Spies, who called his name twice now in this series. But, boy, nobody could get in his way, and he puts Bellavo down for a big loss, and West Geo get the football back. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm not sure the blocking is good enough for a set uh, pass play for Chardon. It makes it rather difficult there. And, uh, you know, and that was an obvious pass play. Uh, one, you know, you got the fourth and long. Two, you bring in the throwing quarterback, which kind of telegraphs what the play is going to be as well. So anytime Chardon has to pass, uh, that's a bad situation to put a quarterback in. So now it's up to the defense to dig in and start improving a little bit here. Drensky on the keeper. Gets himself a couple of yards, a couple of tough yards. Chris Lessler on the tackle. Picked up about two. Clock is under two minutes to go now. 151 and counting here, third quarter. 35 7. Yeah, it's getting to the point where. Uh, Chardon's got to be playing for, uh, you know, pride right now and improvement for the rest of the season and all because, uh, you know, the time is just, the game's running away from them at this point. They pitch it, and that is Vince Sicardi. And he'll get about three or four yards. Paul Judd makes the tackle. Going to bring up a third down and about two and a half as we are down to 109 to go third quarter. Yeah, it's getting one of those. This is a big play for the defense here if they want to make a stand finally and just hold uh, West G to a punt. Actually, where they ended up spotting it is closer to three yards for the first down. Yeah, but West G's got so many weapons. They can run at you. You know, straight up the gut to the outside. They got strong passing. That's a good offensive team out there. Drensky drops back. Pump fakes. Going to take off with it. He's got the first down and then some. Into Chardon territory deep down to the 30-yard line before he is brought down. And that's a big gain and a first down. Gain of about 27 on that play. Yeah, actually, he marked him well inside the 30 down to... Nope. The 27 or so. We got a hold, though, going to be called against West G. Where is we'll the hold? We'll have to see where the flag is. I don't see the oh, flag. Oh, there's, there's a flag on about the 44-yard yep, line. on the far sideline. So, it's, it, in theory, it still may be a first down. Just saw Eric Pavlik come sprinting onto the field, got about three steps on the field, did a 180, and back on the sideline on his back. That leg locked up on him again. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, cramps are hitting the Chardon guys tonight. They move it back, and it's still with the penalty. It's still going to be a first down for the Wolverines. With the penalty assessed, the first down still made by about a yard or so. I'll tell you, one difference in these cramps situations is uh, West G has two full platoons. I don't know if you've noticed yeah. that, but it's... There's no two-way starters on West G. Chardon on the other end, there's a lot of two-way starters. 
When you're on the field that much, one, you don't have the opportunity to get to the water to keep your fluids in. And two, you're just getting your muscles more and more tired out by going two ways. So that's a big advantage. That's why you don't see the cramping up from the West G guys while you do the Chardon guys. Well, gain of a couple of yards on that first down play, and that brings us to the end of the third quarter. We will go to the fourth quarter with the West Yaga Wolverines leading at 35-7. to You're watching Chardon Hilltopper football on GTV. And welcome back to Chardon Memorial Field. Yeah, the uh, Chardon Hilltoppers trailing by a score of 35-7. to West Yaga has the football. And it's a second down and seven. Fourth quarter getting ready to roll here. Joe Drensky under center. And he's going to keep it. Wow, got and a big lane opened up. And a nice tackle from behind. Alex Muir was able to grab Drensky around the ankles. He's that saved spotting, another big. He's spotting yeah. them real close. Yep. First. It may be a first down. They, could have, they haven't signaled it yet. Nope. Referee says third down. Needed to get to the stripe, and he's just a little bit shy of that. So that'll bring up a third down. He'll wind the clock back up. Unless he doesn't have that, uh, the chain's tight. It, he's shy of it on the chain. And if you look at it, it's shy of the 31 too. Or 40, yeah, whatever. There's a handoff, and that's a first down. No doubter there. Over the left side down to the 40-yard line. Yeah, it was just mano on mano, you know, up the gut. Ben Sicardi been a pretty good running back in the backfield for West G. And then you add Joe Pinto in there as well. And as you said, John, you keep some fresh legs by being able to run those guys in there together. Yeah, they, they got a lot of weapons. They got a whole bunch of weapons. I mean, the triple offense, they run it real, real well. But it's also a function of the talented players they have in the backfield running the plays. First down and 10. And that's Joe Pinto. And Pinto gets down to the 31-yard line. He'll pick up close to nine on that first down. Yeah, the thing is, we're not talking real big guys here either. We got Joe Zicardi is 5'9", 165. Vince, his brother, is 5'9", 190. And Pinto is 5'7", 180. So, you know, you're not talking the, the bulky 215-pound running backs that are breaking all these tackles. These are smaller backs. Officially second down and two. Trensky hands the ball off. Again, it's Pinto across the right side. He's got the first down as he gets inside the 30 to near the 27-yard line. Yeah, this is just a grind it out. Need some clock up time for West G here. So we're down to 10.27 on the clock as they move the chains. Then the clock is started again. West G is just running up the gut, grabbing three, four, five yards per carry and uh, eating up valuable clock at the same time. First down and 10. They pitch it back. That's Pinto with some blockers to the 25, and he is swarmed under inside the 20. Yeah, Quinn Izar on the tackle on that one as uh, West G again is driving uh, right down the field here. Seemingly doing whatever. And I'm surprised that they're not uh, going to start substituting here pretty soon to get some of their starters out of the game so they don't pick up injuries for next week. Once again, another run to the outside. And that's Drensky again. Like I said, uh, I'm not sure about that, Smith. Uh, we're under 940 in the game. You have a 35 to 7 lead. You got a quarterback that is, uh, you know, the feature part of your offense and stuff. And not only do you still have him in the game, you have him running plays, you know. And I seriously think I'd put him, set him down rest and no opportunity to get hurt short of falling off the bench second down and four handoff over the left side that's joe pinto and yep. he is inside the five to near the one yard line so another first down for west geog at 907 to go in the game 
Yeah, 35-7 right now, but about a yard shy of it being worse than that. Yeah, like I said, I just if you're going to keep Drensky in there, just have him hand off to Pino. I, I wouldn't run him at all. I, I think that's kind of foolish. You know, it's just, uh, yeah, he can pill up his stats. He's a heck of a ball player and stuff, but it's unnecessary at this point. And what you're risking is injury, which maybe an injury that could end his season or something. And you definitely don't want that on your hands. He wouldn't be on the field if I was coaching West G. Game's well in the hand. First and goal from the one. They've got Pinto as the lone setback. We'll see if they give Joe another try to get in the end zone. He's already been in there once already today. And they, Drensky ends up keeping it, goes over the left side. He picks up another touchdown. That time from one yard out. So that makes it 41-7 to seven then. Drensky again is going to be one of the area scoring leaders no unquestionably. Doubt. That's what his fourth rushing touchdown in one pass. Or two, two two passes, passes and two three rushing touchdowns. Three, okay. And to attempt the point after is Bricklebank, and he knocks another one through. He may be one of the scoring leaders too. <laughs> with the way he gets well, yeah, that's field goals too. and such. Except he missed the one field goal attempt he did have. He could add it on the, those three pointers is what. Puts the kickers into the scoring leader column. So 8.48 to go in the ball game. West Yaga has this one well at hand, 42 to 7. Now we'll see what Nick Ruckel in the offense. They were moving the football pretty well there for a while and that drive a little bit earlier, but stalled out. Yeah, again, the Chardons playing for pride and they just got to you know, work on trying to get their offense uh, jellying a little bit. Bricklebank will tee it up at the 40 right in front of us. We're looking almost straight down the 40-yard line. Yeah, I don't know. The GTV Chalet. <laughs> yeah, the, the Ohio State tent we have up tonight. Which was nice when the sun was out. Kind of mm -hmm. kept blocked that sun until it got a little lower where it got under the awning that we're under. Bricklebank to put the foot to the football again and drills it. Ruckel grabs it, goes into the end zone for a touchback. So Nick tried to tiptoe down that goal line in hopes that he could turn it upfield, but the Hilltoppers will get the ball at the 20-yard line, and it'll be a first down and 10. To be quite honest with you, I don't know why they put that rule in. If the ball touches in the end zone, it's a dead ball. Because what's the difference if you're three yards deep or if you're on the one-yard line? You know, supposedly it's an injury thing, but uh, I don't I don't really see it. If the ball goes into the end zone, you know, you should have the right to pick it up or catch it in the end zone and run it out. Bellavo came looking to the sideline saying, I think we're short somebody on the offensive line. Lou Lamaga comes in. We've, Chardon has had some injuries on that line with guys that have gone down. So okay. Beliveau is back in as the quarterback. That's a good choice. And they kick it back to Coy. He's got some room to the 25, got a block to the 30, backpedals up to the 35-yard line before he gets squashed down there by Mike Vaverka. And that's a first down for Nate Coy. Yeah, the truth of the matter is I think Beliveau is your quarterback. Ruckel's the good change-up quarterback, which mm -hmm. you can believe. You saw what he can do. Now turn it back over to Bellavo. Let him try to get some momentum going into next week's game against what I understand is supposed to be a much improved Kenson team. So the schedule doesn't get any easier for the toppers. They hand the ball off. That's Zach Barry. And he'll go across the left side of the 40. Nate Coy now limping off the field for Chardon. Well, it just keeps getting worse and worse when it comes to these injuries. Yeah. Coy's been off a couple times, kind of hobbled. So far, at yeah, least. you got Barry down, too. With the, yep. I'm assuming it's cramps on him because he's kind of stretching out the, the hammies a little bit. Well, you have to start hooking these guys up to IVs on the sideline. Yeah, well, he looks, he's not hobbled or done, so he got uh -huh. rid of his cramp. But he was down in front of the referee, and referee stopped play, so yeah. he's got to come out for one play. Yeah, he looked kind of ticked off that he had to come out. These guys that want to be yeah. in there and game it out. Paul Judd has checked into That's the game for Chardon. 
Actually, Barry's a strong-looking fullback. He's a good-looking fullback. If you can get the rest of the offense in gear, I think he could be a good feature back to set up other plays on the outside, you know, and just the bull rushing on the inside. Ruckel is in the game, though. He's split wide to the near side. Well, he's an athlete. I, I can see him in the game. Bellabo going to run it, puts his head down, and runs over a defensive back, but gets brought down after a gain of a couple of yards on the play. Greg Kohler on the tackle. Yeah, Chardon's moving. they got a third and short now, and uh, ideally they can just keep moving the ball and uh, hopefully get into the end zone or something, get something positive going and what... So far, there hasn't been that many positives this evening for Chardon team. All the positive has been on the West Jaga side. Third down and in about a yard, maybe just a titch more than that. Bellavo under center. And he's going to keep it, trying to get to the corner and does. Gets the first down as he plows across midfield. Good job by Dan as he put his head down and ran over one of the West Jaga defensive backs. I think that might have been Kohler again. But the important thing is the stakes move, and that's a really good thing for the Chardon psyche. I see Hogan on the sideline carrying around his uh, practice tee to set up to kick into the nets. That's kind of hopefully just for the extra points, because I don't think they're going to be using him for field goals here. Chardon needs touchdowns. West Jaga. Had a man sprinting off the field late, so they had to call timeout. So down to 6.46 left here in this ball game tonight. And a beautiful evening here at Chardon Memorial Field. Really is. Great night. Hilltoppers, I'm sure they're going to walk out of here very disappointed tonight. The one thing that I've been told this week is, you know, watch out for this Chardon Hilltopper offense. And... You know, they really thought that they could at least put some points up on the board against West G's D, but it just has not been the case. West Geauga's defense may be a little bit better and maybe came in a little underrated. Yeah, they could be. Just, just not being able to get anything but the seven points so far. And I'll tell you, West Geauga's offense has been impressive. There's no question about it. That's not a case of the Chardon defense being horrible or anything. West G just has a very solid offense out there. Ruckel on the reception, and he will lunge forward to the 38-yard line, or 42-yard line, excuse me. He'll pick up almost eight on that play. Well, that's a good deal. They'll do a little throwing. Again, this game's out of hand. You know, you're not playing so much. You're playing the... Maybe get a score, make it a little closer, a little bit of pride. But you're also building up for the rest of the season and for next week's game. And mixing in a pass here and then, you're going to need Bellavo to throw completions at some point in the season. Flags fly. Did you Have you seen any of the NFL games this year? What, preseason yeah. games? Yeah, I've watched some of them. Do you see where they've trying to the experiment of having the umpire stand back behind the line of scrimmage oh, yeah. instead of on behind the ball. And that's given like a totally different look yeah. to the game. Too, well, it's uh, also slowing the game down because yeah. they can't get to spot the football as quick, especially in the two minute drills because yeah. he's playing 15 yards behind the play. <laughs> he's got to yeah. chase it instead of going with it. But I don't know if that's just, I haven't heard enough to know if that's an experiment that they're trying or if it's something they're going to implement. I don't think it's going to be implemented. I think it is a preseason thing right now to take a view of it. They did make some weird rules, like there's no wedges anymore. Did you know that? They did away with the wedge. They hand the ball to Coy, and he doesn't get anywhere. Might have actually lost a half a yard. I've, yeah, where they lock their arms and... Yeah, it actually, yeah. you know, get tight in there and kick returns. So now I guess it's wall left, wall right. Yeah. <laughs> Third down and seven. Don't forget, we've got plenty more of high school sports action coming your way on GTV throughout the course of this fall, in the winter, and in the spring, of course. So we invite you to just keep uh, your ears peeled, and you can check the different channels out for the guides. And, of course, you can get the tweets, and you can get the emails that John gets at home and yeah, not all kinds tweets, of things. No, no tweets No for tweets me. for John. So we've got movement on both sides of the football. It's just a matter of who 
They're going to say that Chardon drew off West Geauga, so instead of having a third down and seven, it should be a third down and 12. And that will be the call. They'll move it back five yards. 5.05 to go in the ball game. And the Hilltoppers on the losing end of this one for the second year in a row. West Geauga put it to them again last year, and it hasn't uh, been a whole lot better this year. Speaking of the tweets and football and stuff, did you see Oto Chinko uh, got fine for tweeting during a preseason game? Really? He's actually tweeting during it. <laughs> I mean, that guy just should be banned from football for gross stupidity. He also tweeted, he's got a reality show. Yes. He tweeted the results of it oh. before it was uh, actually on air. That helps ratings very well, much. I'm sure that's going to hurt his paycheck from the network as third, well. Yep, third down and 12. Bellavo will ask for timeout and get timeout. We'll step aside briefly here, and we'll come back with the final 436 shortly. Third down and a dozen for the Hilltoppers. Bellavo going to roll out. The left-hander is going to tuck it under, and he's going to run with it. He's got some room, and he's got the first down and more. Got a block as he gets up to the 31-yard line. Nice run. Yeah, and he's not the running quarterback. About 23 yards on that run by my calculations. Nice run by Dan Bellavo. And there's a first down. That's good for Chardon. We're down to 426 now. You know, clock stopped till they set the chains. And there we go. First down and 10. Bellavo drops back, looks, zing, pass caught. Nice grab there by Archie Kimbrew. Boy, that was a nice grab because he had to fully extend those arms and pull it yeah. back in. I like trying stuff like this, though. Like I said, this is the type of stuff, you know, it's scrimmage is one thing, but live action when you can try passing and that sort of stuff. And that's just pretty much a regular season scrimmage game at this point with the score out of control. You just try stuff against live uh, competition. Second down and a yard. Bellavo going to keep it. He's inside the 15. He's inside the 10 to the 5. Touchdown. He goes in from 22 yards out, and Chardon with another score. Yeah, what sold that play for Bellevue was he actually sold the pitch to the uh, trailing guy. You know, and the West G guys kind of faded out that way. That opened up that inside lane, which he rode right into the end zone. Good job on that one. But Dan gets his first touchdown of this, uh, actually second touchdown. He's got both scores. Yes, he does. Dan Bellevue does. Yeah, that was a quarterback scoring thing for a while there. It was. And here is Tyler Hogan to attempt the second PAT of the game. Yeah, we've got flags and whistles and, and bells and hoots and just anything possible going on out there. It looks like illegal participation against the Hilltoppers must have 12 men out there. Oh, there's the extra guy coming off. <laughs> oh. I'm glad somebody realized and came off and they didn't get the flag thrown on them yeah, again. I think, I think you're in my spot. No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> we'll share it. I thought I was first team special teams. Good hold down on the snap there by... Ruckle and the extra point by Tyler Hogan is good. Good job there by Nick grabbing that and spotting it. So with 3.40 to go here in the ball game, 42 to 14 is the score. Chardon Hilltoppers still working hard trying to make some things happen. Don't forget if you want the replay information emailed to you, send, you just go to the website at jogatv.org and sign up. John signed up, so it can't be that hard. So they'll set the schedule. You'll be the first to know behind John because he signed up before you. It's easy and informative, so sign up now. JogaTV.org, the GTV replay information. I think they sent him out alphabetically. So it just depends so on what your your, yeah, so you might be last. your email name is, right. <laughs> Aaron with two A's would probably be the first one sent out. Tyler 
So Hogan to kick off. Nick Cuthbert goes back deep along with Joe Sicardi. Nice high end over ender. Sicardi yeah, backs up to the six. He's across the 15, 20, and upended at the 24 yard line. Getting a little tempers going, and there's a flag. There's another flag. Getting a little chippy on the far side. Yeah. Like John Connick made the tackle on that return. We'll sort this whole thing out here. It might be offsetting. I wouldn't be surprised if we got offsetting personal fouls on this one. Saw a couple of the West Geauga guys kind of jumping up and down. Don't know if they were yelling back or they were the initiator but it was right in front of the West Geauga bench so we'll see what happens here imagine it's going to be some unsportsmanlike conduct call or calls yeah that's I'm assuming it might be an offsetting and it's dead ball it was after the play yep. so it's not going to change uh, the possession or a re-kick or anything like that And we got an unsportsman like it is against West G. I said I saw a couple of their guys kind of jumping up and down and looked like they were hollering some things. Little taunting of some sort. And now actually the Argonauts, they ran it all the way back to run it all the way back this way. So I don't really understand what happened right. there. Well, we know West G's got the ball at the 27-yard line. Now yeah, we do. we'll just go with that. Was there offsetting there? Well, he ran it back that way, and the guy turned around and came back this way. It spotted at about where it was tackled, right? Close to it. Maybe it was half the distance one way, then 15 back the other. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, well, like you said, it's it's on the 27, first and 10, West G, with 3.35 left in the game. Zach Casera is in at the quarterback position now for the Wolverines with 3.35 to go. And it looks like the a fumble on the exchange, and the Hilltoppers get the football. They'll take it back over now inside the West Geauga 30. So they put the second team in there, a little... Confusion on the snap or the <coughs> exchange, and they will turn the ball back over to the Hilltoppers now with 3.29 to go in a 42-14 to 14 ball game. Well, that's a good opportunity for Chardon to tighten the score a little bit and make it a little more presentable in the newspapers tomorrow. They'll run Ruckel to the near side. So that means they've still got Bellabo as the quarterback. He's got a couple of touchdowns today. He's going to keep it, and he is going to be spun around uh, and dragged down. I think he might have even lost a yard or so on that one. Mario Spies had him around the waist and will put him down for maybe a loss of a yard. Didn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, there was just penetration in the backfield there, and there was, you know, they were like staggered, like a little wall of them there where there was, you couldn't cut it inside, you couldn't go outside, you know, it was just... They stuffed that play totally. Second down, 11. They swing the pass out to the near side and right well, through the hands of the intended receiver, John Connick. Yeah, and that'll that, bring up a third and 11. Yeah, that was a nice lead pass there. He laid it out in front of him. Connick just got a little fumbly on it and couldn't pull it in. I'm a little bitter with Jevnikar right now, just so you know. You what? I'm a little bitter with him because he reminded us today, game starts at 7, not 7.30. Make sure you bring sunglasses. Didn't say anything about bringing the cushions for the bleacher seats. Oh, yeah. He forgot it, to it remind us of that. It is getting a little hard. We're getting a little rough. So I'm a little bitter with him that he's got this whole, you know, the whole checklist of things that we needed to do today. Well, but he yeah, didn't but remind that, us about the cushions. That fills his needs, if you think mm -hmm. about it, where the cushion is just uh, totally on us. You know, he doesn't care about us. Third down and 11. Bellavo strips, slips one tackle. Now Whoa. he falls down at the 37-yard line. He just, feet just went out from underneath him. I'm not sure... He would have made much progress no, regardless, but no, he no. goes down, and that'll bring up a fourth down and pretty long to go. Yeah, there were a good five, six uh, white shirts in front of him on that corner. There was no place to go. Down to 221 now. 
Fourth down, and we're going to call it about 18, I guess. Fourth down and 18. So they go from the shotgun. Coy goes in motion. They fake the handoff to him. Bellavo rolls out, firing it, looking downfield for Ruckel. He turns around. The ball is into the end zone. He got totally turned around by the defensive back. But that 15 yards won't be enough for a first down. This is not like the NFL where it's a spot foul. Yeah, but it's still fourth down, though. Right. So they do have the down. Yeah, and they, the, they'll make it a little bit easier on them. Yeah. Yeah, you can even run it because it's going to be a fourth and short. But I'll tell you, Rucko looked immediately for the flag. You know, as soon as he was bumped and spun around, he looked for the flag. The umpire comes back to the 36, and he will march it all the way down to the 21-yard line. So that makes it fourth. Nope, they give him the first down. Automatic? Yep. Okay, automatic, automatic first down. First. The pass interference is automatic first down. Okay. So 159 to go in the ball game. Chardon trying to pick up their third score of the night. A couple of wide outs to either side. They keep Zach Berry in to the right of the quarterback. That's Coy going in motion Whoa. right through the hands, and that is going to be... Still loose on the deck, and West Geauga comes up with it. I think so. Bellevue kind of got a second shot at it, but I don't think he had a good enough angle to come up with the ball. So West Geauga will take it over on down, or take it over on a turnover with 1.53 to go in the ball game. So that should be pretty much Chardon's last off opportunity offensively. Now we'll see if West Geauga, who had a hard time Hanging on to the football the last time they had it. Zach Casera, the quarterback, will come out. Casera, 6'2", 221. He's a junior. That's a bulky quarterback, you know, 6'2", 221. A lot of teams have them as their tackles, even. And he hands the ball off. Not a whole bunch there. Got a couple, maybe. Maybe one. I think that was Dominic Varga on the carry. Second down, and we'll call it nine. Clock ticking away here, down under a minute and a half to go. West G in no hurry to get to the line of scrimmage here. They pitch it back, and a nice open field tackle there for the Hilltoppers coming in to make the play. Alex Muir as he upended the runner, Nick McDonald. Third down and long coming up as we are at the one-minute mark here in the ballgame. Yeah, that's the thing on that one. Uh, Muir came in, and you always talk about getting lower than the lower guy. Muir was below his blocker and was just able to fight through him to get to the running back. So there must be something to that uh, the lower man wins theory. 35 seconds to go. Yeah, this could be the last snap of the game here. And they hand the ball off, and that's Varga. And Varga's got the first down, and then some as he's across midfield. Finally run out of bounds in Chardon territory inside the 40-yard line. Well, I guess not the last play if they go out of bounds, you know? <laughs> or if they run for a mile. That was quite a run there by... Dominic Varga, only a sophomore, 6'2", but goes 245 pounds. Wow, that's a bulky back. They'll actually spot it at the 38-yard line of the toppers. First down and 10, 19 seconds to go. They wind the clock up. West G doesn't even have to run a play. No, it's running out. No. Why did they get the clock? I thought they were out of bounds. First down stopped it. Must have been stayed, must have stayed inbounds. And yeah, West Geauga will not run another play, and that's going to do it. Well, the final is in tonight, and the news not good for the Chardon Hilltoppers. It's the West Geauga Wolverines 42, and the Hilltoppers 14. We'll be back. We'll have some final thoughts right after this.
And welcome back to Shard Memorial Field. Not a good night tonight for the Shard and the Hilltoppers. Showed some signs of life offensively a little bit here tonight, John, but I think uh, a pretty good West Yaga offense, and, and they scored a lot of points, but uh, Chardon's, Chardon's offense is the thing that uh, needs to get rolling here, I think. Yeah, and uh, defensively, uh, like I said, I thought Chardon was much improved in the scrimmage, but uh, I think that was a combination. I think they played okay. I'm not going to say they played really well. I think they did play okay. But uh, they just ran into a very, very strong offense. And I'd be surprised if many schools really slow down this offense here. I think they're going to be scoring a lot of points throughout the course of the season. West Jug has got a good-looking returning team this year. Yeah, they sure do. And... Uh, we'll see what happens as Chardon goes down the road. Hopefully they made a little bit of headway. So that about wraps things up here from Chardon. We'd like to thank our funding communities once again for this ball game. They are Chardon Township, the city of Chardon, Hamden Township, and Munson Township. For John Walsh, I'm Craig Dees. I see that our time is up. I thank you very much this evening for your time. Once again, the final score from Chardon, it's West Geauga 42 and Chardon 14.